Let me show you how we can introduce some magical light on this raw file using a little bit of Lightroom editing. If you want to follow along, you can find the link to download this raw file in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So we're starting with a very bright and contrast rich scene. Looking at the histogram, you can see it's pretty well exposed. We don't have any dramatic over or under exposure. Still, this is a very challenging shot to edit. First, we always want to do the basic adjustments. That means we can do a little bit of cropping if you want. I don't think I need to crop this image. However, I want to go right into the basic panel and I want to change the profile. I'm going to go from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. If you look closely, this will lessen the contrast just a little bit, which in turn helps with the darkest areas of the image as it makes those brighter. I want to further brighten those areas up and that's why I'm going to bring up the shadows first just a little bit. We don't want to go too crazy because that would look super, super natural. So I'm always going to use low amounts to be very, very careful. And I'm just going to layer different adjustments over each other until I get the result I'm looking for. So besides the shadows, we can also bring up the blacks to further brighten up the darkest areas of the image. And again, I'm just using tiny, tiny adjustments here. This is already looking much better than before, as you can see comparing it to the original version, but let's continue. One area that is rather problematic is the sky at this point, because it kind of looks blown out and I wanna change that. What we can do is we can play around with highlights, bringing them down. And as we bring down the highlights, we will get more details in the sky, especially around the clouds. Again, I don't want to drop them all the way down, although this might look good at first. I want to keep them somewhere around minus 50. Actually, let's go a little lower even, somewhere around here. Okay, this is looking super good so far. Now at this point, what I'm noticing is a very subtle blue color cast. You can see it especially in those darker areas in the mountains in the distance these have a blue color cast which i'm not a big fan of so i want to kind of get rid of it by bringing up the temperature slightly this will also make the sky look a little warmer and that's exactly what we want so increasing the overall temperature is a great way to begin introducing this magical light for this scene again i don't want to overdo it because we're going to layer multiple color adjustments on top of each other later on. So we want to start with something simple and neutral, just like this. Perfect. Again, we can take a look at before we quick and you can see we do have a much more different looking image at this point with just a bunch of basic adjustments. By the way, if you are following along editing this raw file, you will notice a lot of sensor spots. I already have cleaned them up. So just so you know. Now, I also want to go through the presence tab real quick. I want to introduce a little bit more texture to sharpen the details a bit. I also want to add a bit of dehaze, making this image look just a little bit clearer right around here. This adds some really nice punch to this scene. And I also want to bring up the vibrance. Perfect. So now that we have done the basic adjustments, we can now focus on a few areas more locally. And as always, we're going to do that with a bunch of masks. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add some kind of vignetting effect coming down from the top, making the top part of the sky darker. I'm going to use a color range for that and I'm targeting a blue color tone from right here. This is looking like a proper selection. So what I want to do now is to click on the mask, go to subtract and choose a linear gradient because I don't want to affect anything in the foreground. I'm going to subtract from the sky like this. And with this mask done, I'm going to bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I want the top part of the sky to be rather dark, just like this. I'm also going to introduce some contrast, which will make the sky even darker. And I do want to bring down the temperature here. The reason I'm doing this is I want the warmth in the sky to be in the lower part of it. And the top part should remain cold, dark and blue, just like this. And that's the whole reason for me to bring down the temperature. Now bringing it down this much, you can see the saturation is kind of overwhelming up there. So I'm going to bring that down as well, just to be safe. 
So let's say right around here. Then let's introduce some more warmth to the bottom part of the sky. For that, we want to use a sky selection. And again, we don't want to affect the whole sky. So we need to further adjust the mask. Click on those three dots, choose intersect mask with, and choose a radial gradient. And with this radial gradient, I'm just going to cover pretty much the center like this. You can rotate this radial gradient slightly to fit the light of the scene, but I think this is looking pretty good. And what I want to do in here is to bring up the temperature just a little bit. And I'm also going to introduce more tint. You can see because this part of the sky has such strong highlights, this color effect of the white balance doesn't have that much of an impact on this area. What we can do as well is to click on this color box right here and choose a specific color tone to be applied to this mask. So let's see. I want to go with something very saturated in the orange color range right around here. Uh, let's maybe bring down the saturation, however, a little bit. Okay. That is looking much better. Again, a very subtle change, but we keep on going and in the end we will have some very dreamy magical light in here. So next up we could also work on the foreground. I'm going to use a linear gradient for that and let me create a rather sharp edge here. So with this linear gradient I want to bring down the highlights just to make the reflection in the water a little bit darker. I also want to bring down the shadows for a little more contrast. Then let's raise the whites for even more contrast. All right. And what I want to do as well to that reflection is let's go down to the effects and I want to raise the texture. This will help bring some more attention to those streaks in the water, which I think look quite good. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity so the water just looks a little bit softer. Perfect. At this point, I want to continue working on the sky. Let me use another linear gradient covering again in the top part of the sky like this. And I want to further make it darker. So instead of dropping the exposure, I'm going to drop the blacks. Here I'm going to make a few bigger adjustments because I want to have this really crazy effect up here. So let's drop it like this, maybe adjust the linear gradient a little further upwards. And I think this looks great. Again, we could bring down the saturation a little bit to make this blue tone less overwhelming. Right around here looks great to me. And I'm going to stack one more linear gradient, making it a little smaller, but again, targeting the very top of the sky. And I'm going to further bring down the blacks in here. Wonderful, this looks great. We're almost done with the masking. There are just a few little more things. I want to make the subject stand out a little more. So I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm clicking right in here on that church. Of course, this is a very, very general selection. So I'm going to use a refine tool. Let's bring it down until we have only selected that building right here. Right around this point looks good. And I'm going to click on those three dots one more time, go to intersect mask with and choose brush. Now with this brush, I'm just going to paint over these buildings, which I want to make slightly brighter. And what I'm doing in here to make them brighter is to increase the exposure slightly. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. Okay, now let's see if we can play around with the refine tool a little more to just get a little more brightness in here. But I think this looks good. Then let me target the shadows of this image. For this, we want to use a luminance range mask. I'm going to cut out the blacks by bringing up this point to the, to the right. So the darkest parts of the image won't be affected. Then I'm filtering out the highlights by bringing this point down to the left. So right around here. Now, the problem is we do have a very harsh edge. To make this edge softer, I'm clicking right on this point and let's bring it down. So what I want to do with this mask is I want to add more contrast by making these darker tones even darker. I'm going to slightly bring down the exposure. 
and I am going to add a little bit of clarity. And let's bring down the saturation a bit. Okay, and finally, I want to add a special effect with a little bit of fog lingering over the water. So I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm starting right above the water surface right here. And I'm creating a rather sharp edge like this. Now we need to subtract another linear gradient coming up from the bottom just like that. And now with this mask, what we want to do is we want to bring down the dehaze. Very, very carefully here, right around here maybe. And besides that, what we can do as well is to bring up the blacks. And for some more brightness, we can bring up the whites. So this fog might look a little bit too warm. So I'm going to bring down the temperature again to counter that. And let's see. This is looking like a really, really good fog effect. I do think I want to adjust one of these linear gradients a little more. So let me bring this down so we get more of this fog effect. That looks great. And at this point, let's compare to before one more time. You can see the colors are much, much better overall. The subject is standing out much, much more as well. And the fog effect looks especially great on this image. However, now we want to enhance those colors more and create this magical light. So we want to start in the color mixer and I want to work on the hue for a moment. What this means is I'm going to bring down the yellow hue and this will, and this in turn will give the sky more of an orange color tone, especially right here behind the subject. At the same time, I want to bring up the orange hue. So just like this. Then let's switch over to the saturation and I'm going to bring up the orange saturation a bit as well as the yellow saturation just to give the sky some more color. And I'm actually going to bring down the blue tones because they are still a bit too harsh at this point. Now let's jump out of the color mixer into the color grading for the split toning. And since we still have a ton of highlights in the sky, we can make use of the split toning, specifically target the highlights here and introduce a very, very warm color tone to them. So first we want to set up the hue and of course we're going to choose something warm. I'm looking for a color right around here and then let's bring up the saturation and I want to raise it a lot. See how this will change the whole image completely. This looks great. I want to further keep on improving these warmer colors by now heading into the midtones. And again, I'm going to use a warm color tone. Maybe let's go somewhere in the red range for those midtones. And again, I'm going to bring up the saturation. However, this time I'm not going as crazy as with the highlights because we don't want to overdo it, of course. Now, what we can do as well is to go into the calibration tab and I want to bring up the saturation of all these three color tones. So red, green, and blue. Wonderful. Now we're almost done with the editing. Just one more thing I want to do in the details tab. And of course, that's the sharpening. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down Alt key so we can see where the sharpening is applied. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. All right, and here we have the finished image. As you can see, you can do a lot of cool things with a little bit of Lightroom, even introducing some very warm, good looking magical light like this. So let me know what you think about this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.